there, Adam here. This month's XDA Developers TV is brought to you by the Samsung Smart App Challenge 2012. Enter for your chance to win your part of over $4 million in cash prizes by clicking the link at the top of xdadevelopers.com or by visiting developer.samsung.com. Now this is how to get a soda like an elite hacker. Launch Google Wallet and then you launch AirTerm type cat slash dev slash ubrandom, hit enter. Then use the pay pass, and then make your selection. Hi there, Adam here. Today we're going to talk about Arduino. Now Google just recently released the ADK specs uh, about last year at I.O. 2011. Uh, the ADK runs on Android 2.3.5 or higher and it's basically the same thing as an Arduino however it has a neat little host mode adapter. Now before we start talking about the ADK we're going to talk about the Arduino and discuss how it works first. In this video we'll be working with highs and lows or binary ones and zeros. However, the Arduino's capabilities go way far beyond that, allowing for communications, pulse width modulation, and also analog input. The Arduino allows for rapid prototyping of new devices. Uh, if you add a battery backup to it, you've got yourself a mobile device. And this can be a really good way for you Flashaholics to get your fix. Let's get started. Now we can go to arduino.cc, click the Downloads button, and then scroll on down and select the operating system. Now we'll open up the code folder and we can open up our newly downloaded file and simply drag and drop the Arduino into the cold folder. Open that up and double click Arduino. Now it's going to ask for a folder to put in your new sketches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into my code folder. And here we have the Arduino IDE. We can close this out for now. I went ahead and I made this off camera and what this is is a bunch of LEDs with resistors tied to individual pins on the bottom and when you apply voltage to these pins you'll see that the LEDs light up and it goes from blue to white. What I'm going to do now is attach this directly to the Arduino and now we have a output device. Alright so here we have a basic Arduino sketch with nothing it's just the outline uh, this is where you put your definitions this is the setup and it runs once at the very start of the program and then uh, here's the loop the loop is what will continuously run throughout the rest of the life of the program so let's uh, go ahead and make pin 24 one of these LEDs right here blink and the way we'll do that is we can define 24 uh, LED, I'm sorry, 24. And that should uh, define the pin 24 as an LED. Uh, it'll define a reference to LED as pin 24. So next we want to set up the pin mode and we want to say pin mode LED as an output. So now we've uh, defined pin 24 as the LED and we've said LED is an output. Now we want to digital write LED high. And we can wait 20 seconds or uh, 20 milliseconds and we could say delay and digital write it low. Alright so let's go ahead and test this app. If all goes well, this LED should blink once.
And there we have it. Just get, did you catch that? Here, let's see if we can do that again. Real quick. Now, the cool thing is you can always restart the application by just hitting the reset button. All right, so let's get into something a little bit more advanced than just uh, simply blinking an LED. I'm going to go ahead and define a bunch of LED pins as, uh, since we have this as an array of LEDs, let's make it an array on the application. Alright, so we've defined this array of LEDs in code right here, and we've counted them up so we know how many there are total. And then here, what we do is we loop through from the first position in the array all the way to the last position in the array, and we execute each one of these pins, uh, one, each one of these commands down here with this pin that is constantly growing. Now what this does is it will set the pin mode as an output for each pin in the array and then digital write high, delay for 50 milliseconds, and then digital write low. And if everything worked properly, we should be able to see something kind of cool. And there you go. Now let's take that a step further. What I'm going to do here is copy this code twice, and what we'll do is we'll write all of the pins high, and then we'll write all of the pins low. And let's see how that works. Pretty cool, huh? There's a lot of cool things you can do with an Arduino. It's definitely not just limited to experimentation. Uh, check this out. Alright, so this is an electromagnetic field detector like you'll find on Ghost Hunters. Uh, what it's used for is detecting where sources of 60 hertz noise are coming from. And that's really important. Uh, I was able to build this out of my Arduino. Now the uh, thing is, in a hospital, uh, ECGs are susceptible to noise, so finding the problem is very important. Now of course the Arduino IDE is open source, and the Arduino itself is open hardware. You can find the code for this project, as well as much more, over on xda-adk.googlecode.com. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And add me to your circles on Google+. You can go to plus.adamoutler.com. Until next time, keep hacking.